Hey guys, Woodruff here. Let's get into the last type of arthritis, which is gout or gouty arthritis. Um, if you want to learn a little bit more, because people find this interesting, or like, how in the world do you get these uric acid crystals in your body? Um, this osmosis video is pretty good. Um, I recommend watching the beginning and then going to a, like, um, you know, kind of watching a little bit about um, the basics of it and then going to more about like causes and other things. When they get the cell level stuff, you do not need to know that in depth. Anyway. Um, so what is gout? Gout is different than the other types of arthritis um, because it's, uh, well, I guess I would say it's more kind of like, it's like an outside issue, like with rheumatoid arthritis, where there's something else that's leading to the arthritis or arthritic issue. Um, but what's happening here is um, sometimes because of a hereditary issue, like having, I mean, we have primary gout where it's like genetic or sometimes because of things like metabolic syndrome, um, you know, um, a high intake of things that could lead to uric acid accumulation, um, things like um, some of the, you know, organ meats and alcohol or big things. We'll talk more about high purine foods um, or your kidneys could not be working right, um, can lead or medicate, uh, I'll add in medications you're taking can cause you to hold on to more, but just think of it this way is either because of genetics or because your kidneys aren't working or because of what you're taking in, you're either taking in too much uric acid acid or your body cannot get rid of it for whether a genetic reason, a medication, or your kidneys aren't working. Um, so effectively what's happening is you're accumulating these uric acid crystals and not everyone who has, um, uh, you know, a elevation of like, you could have an elevated uric acid, not everyone who has elevation of uric acid ends up with these crystals. You're just lucky if you do. No, I'm just joking. It's actually like a whole pathophysiology thing, but you don't have to know that in depth. Um, but effectively what's happening is um, these uric acid crystals, when your body has too much of something, um, they end up depositing them different places. But um, because there's decreased um, blood flow in your joints, um, especially the joints of your feet, this is where a lot of these patients end up um, getting, um, you know, these really painful joints. And um, eventually these crystals can, they're kind of like the, the video, the osmosis video shows them up as like sharp daggers, um, which is super scary. Um, but as a result of that, um, these patients can end up with um, arthritis or bone breakdown and stuff like that too. But yes, anyway. So let's talk about what's different. So this is going to look similar to the other um, slides I've had. Um, but um, what's different is, is that they have inflammation and pain in one or more joints. And the thing that is especially different is usually it's in the big toe. Um, and so... Um, uh, that's one of the questions you want to ask about where their symptoms are. Now, this can happen in the hands. This can happen in the feet. It can happen in other places like the elbow and the knees and other things like that. But usually it's in the big toe. And it just has to do with where there's less blood flow and stuff like that, or where there's more sluggish blood flow, where those crystals can get stuck. Um, <clears throat> so um, really think of gout effectively. Like, sorry, sometimes these things just come to me. Think of gout as like a disposal issue. Like you either have this accumulated particle, and again, don't you know, you're going to want to know why you could like, you want to know all the stuff I had on the first slide about why, um, but you're accumulating too much waste and your body's trying to find a place to dump it out. And so it's kind of think about like, I'll tell you a funny story that um, when um, we were redoing the garden in front of our house, like whoever lived here before us had all these rocks and um, <clears throat> we wanted, we didn't want the rocks anymore. We wanted something else, but we're like, what do we do with all these damn rocks? So we started driving around and finding the places of least resistance to leave these rocks. And we wanted to, we didn't want to be too conspicuous so we started leaving them um in really random places so you know just so you know if you ever see a pile of rocks i probably left it somewhere um but anyway um but yeah it's the same thing like it's or it's like when you have extra trash and you try to go to someone else's neighborhood and drop it off you're like i'm gonna just put this here and see if anyone notices like that's pretty much what gout is is where there's like an accumulation of too much waste and your body tries to find the path of least resistance of a place to deposit it that is my beautiful um gout as a trash <laughs> as a trash can um demonstration or um analogy if that helps you anyway getting back to what it's going to look like like i said big toe most common um thing and then the joint 
joints are also going to look a little different here compared to osteoarthritis where there's no inflammation and then there's rheumatoid arthritis where they're like red swollen inflamed um, a patient with gout is usually going to have dusky and cyanotic joints where the uric acid crystals are accumulating um they're going to be extremely tender to touch now when i say extremely tender like these patients sometimes when they're having an acute attack um they often um what do you call it um can't even tolerate covers on their feet like it feels like fire to them. Um, and so be super careful when you're doing their assessments with them and super gentle with their feet. Um, we're also going to look for what's called TOFI, I think is the best way to say it. Um, some people say TOFI, whatever you like to say. Um, but there's going to be hard white nodules. And these are literally the crystals. Um, and I'll show them on the next slide. It'll make more sense. But it, this is effectively what um, TOFI are. It's like this um, accumulation, this kind of hard white nodules on the joint space. Um, we also maybe want to assess for presence or absence of systemic symptoms. Some of these patients can have a low-grade fever um, with this inflammatory process. So the other thing is different is how it presents. So we talked about osteoarthritis kind of gradual, um, you know, you're losing that articular cartilage, the pain and the stiffness um, comes on. Rheumatoid arthritis, it comes and goes, but they usually start with those systemic symptoms and then they start having excuse me, the joint issues. Um, with gout, what happens is, is that um uh, they start, sorry, I was just reading my own language. Um, sometimes I can't even understand what I'm trying to say. Um, so that they start and progress rapidly. So sometimes what happens is patients, not a symptom, not a problem in the world, they go to bed and then they wake up in the middle of the night with this like intense pain, like the heaviness of the covers and the, the burning shooting, um, crazy inflammation in their feet or their toe. Um, and, um, you know, it does happen more often at night. I would imagine this has something to do with decreased cardiac output or decreased flow to your toes at night because everything's focused on rest and digestion. Um, but I could just be making stuff up because I always like to bring everything back to cardiac output. Um, but yes, so um, ask them when their symptoms started and did it progress really rapidly? Like I think the, the gout video talked about how like it starts and then it gets to its like maximum, like the worst part of it, usually within a few hours. And then sometimes it can, then it starts to get better, um, but it can, you know, take days to weeks to recover. So um, they kind of have these like exacerbations and then periods where things are better. Now they can go long periods feeling okay. That's something else that's different too. Um, is, is that it's not like rheumatoid where the body's attacking itself. It's just like, hey, am I building up waste or not? Anyway, some diagnostic tests we're going to do. You may say, oh, okay, I bet we're going to check a uric acid. Well, that would make sense, except your uric acid um, in your blood actually fluctuates throughout the day. Here's a normal uric acid here. Um, but something that you want to keep in mind is, is that um, even though this is not the best measure, because like we could check it at one point, it could be normal and they could still have gout. Um, but the higher the level, the greater risk. So like the greater risk that your body is going to be like, okay, let's start you know, depositing these crystals in places. And again, it's not that it's actually sitting there and making that decision, but I'm just using it as an analogy. Um, anyway, but you know, def well, you definitely don't want that level to be too high. Um, we can check a 24 hour urine because that will be a better measure to see how well your kidneys are excreting uric acid, um, but it's still not going to be the best measure. The golden standard for diagnosis is actually to do that joint aspiration um, of that fluid, because um, if we go in and right now in the joints, there is deposits of uric acid crystals, they should not be there. So if we find them in the joint space, that is like a definitive, hey, they have gout. Um, we're going to rule out other causes, just make sure that they don't have, you know, some other issue or injury. So this is those TOFI, you know, those white nodules. So you can see they can get very large and painful. Oh, stop. Um, and so, um, you know, one thing you want to worry about with these, so first I'll say this, things are getting better if there's less pain or they're having less gout attacks, exacerbations. Um, this is less about like chronic musculoskeletal deformities. I mean, it's possible they can happen. They can, this can actually become arthritis, like osteoarthritis. Um, but um, we're less worried about the functional mobility because these attacks usually come on quickly and then leave pretty quickly um, versus um, more uh, just that they can experience complications. So of course we would worry if they had more pain, 
more frequent attacks, um, if they did start to have issues with range of motion or inability to complete tests, that's a really bad sign because usually with gout, this is not like a chronic arthritis where they're like losing the ability to use their joints or it's not like rheumatoid where they're getting deformities where they can't use their joints. Um, these tophi um, or tophi, I'm, I'm gonna start saying it the wrong way, my Jesus. Um, these tophi are, um, you know, usually, um, you know, come and go. It's not something that sticks with us. But as the nurse, I am gonna be worried about a few things. I wanna look for complications. Patients with gout can end up with stones in other places, so they can end up with kidney stones. Um, those, um, the tophi can also break down and literally perforate and um, through their skin, which could lead to open skin infection issues. Um, and then, like I mentioned, if they have frequent attacks, it can break down the joints and they can end up with osteoarthritis. Um, so it can lead to chronic issues. So this is a great time to add to your arthritis table and add in gout about what is different about it. Um, so how are we going to manage it? So this is like um, rheumatoid arthritis in that we need medications that are going to stop them from um, having this, the, to treat, we need medications to treat the acute problem and then we need medications to manage it so that we don't need so much acute treatment. So um, medications that we use to decrease pain and inflammation during an acute attack are going to be NSAIDs and the other top one uses what's known as colchizine um, and this is, um, this can help to decrease uric acid but it also um, helps to um, acutely decrease inflammation. Um, if these are ineffective, we can use steroid injections or systemic steroids, but these aren't used very often unless it's a very severe attack. And then the maintenance medication, the medication they're going to take to regularly stop themselves from accumulating so much uric acid is going to be allopurinol. Um, so think like it is all, all pure, getting you all pure of your purines. Um, and so, um, it's definitely, um, uh, what a top med use. There's other meds used too, but the um, colchizine and allopurinol are the top two. So think colchizine, acute attack. Um, allopurinol is more for long-term maintenance. Um, and then lifestyle changes in education. So um, this is also, like I said, a lot of this could be a result of um, too much of certain foods in their diet or um, something that they might be doing when it comes to other chronic conditions or like the weight loss or metabolic syndrome stuff. So we definitely want to provide good education too, not just meds. Um, just some things about these meds. Colchizine, like I said, treats the inflammation, can also reduce uric acid production. Um, but both of these can lead to GI um, issues. Um, you know, colchizine is preferred to take on an empty stomach if you can tolerate it. But, you know, with both of these, if you need to take with food, you can. But um, colchizine is better absorbed on an empty stomach. Um, both of them can affect the liver. Colchizine can also affect the kidneys. So just kind of watch closely um, the, the function of those. Um, you might also see some of these like allopurinol used in cancer patients. So just knows it can, knows. Just know it can be used for things outside of gout as well. Ah, no, stop. All right, so let's try this again. Um, so what am I going to do as the nurse? Um, this is a patient compared to osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis, who I like them up and moving. When someone has an acute gout attack, um, sometimes in that really severe, like that beginning period, they may need to be on bed rest um, if their pain or tenderness is severe. We do not want those tophi to perforate. Um, we want to be gentle and use care when assessing their feet, consider the weight of the blanket, maybe like lightweight bedding might be a better option um, for these patients. These patients, remember I had that question about osteoarthritis that I talked about, like increase their fluid intake. It is not helpful for osteo, but it is good for gout because um, in gout, um, remember I have too much of something and fluids are great for patients that are dehydrated or that have too much of a particle or something. It needs to be diluted. Um, gout also is closely connected to kidney issues. And we want to keep the kidneys healthy and filtering and fluid um, and flow is great for the kidneys. Um, so if it's appropriate, of course, if this was a gout patient with heart failure, it would not be appropriate. Um, education is avoiding the things like, I mean, whatever, even if they have like primary where it's like, you know, genetic and they're, you know, we're going to have to have the long-term meds. Well, all these patients are going to need uh, 
Like these patients are um, very, uh, let me say it this way, gout is very rarely managed without meds. Um, so regardless of whether it's primary, secondary, whatever. Um, but we always want to think about lifestyle too, because even if someone you know, like, it, it's kind of like the whole thing, like I can take a cholesterol pill, but if I'm not doing things to help support a healthy cholesterol in my diet, my exercise, um, it may be a moot point. So um, we definitely want to encourage and avoid those things that can lead to flare ups like high purine foods um, and high purine foods are listed over here, like red meats, organ meats shellfish, refined carbohydrates, like all the white bread, white rice, white pasta, sugar, um, processed food, sugary beverages, and alcohol. So pretty much all the good things in life, um, you know, those are, we're going to need to avoid um, alcohol. And then um, like I've already mentioned, and then um, starvation or fasting can lead for you to accumulate more uric acid. So, um, you know, the fasting is so in right now and so hip and cool. I um, definitely want to be super careful when um, doing that because it can lead to flare ups. Um, it also, uh, part of it is like the dehydration it creates, which can make it hard on the kidneys, which can make the kidneys not work and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, needless to say, um, we talked about this, I think already, you know, a lot of the feuds, uh, feuds, foods, high in purines are going to be those organ meats. Um, so that's really what you want to think about. So think organ meats, think processed foods, um, sugar and alcohol. So um, yeah, carbs, sugar, alcohol, and meats are going to be your big ones. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much gout. Um, so now's a great time. We've gone through the three types of arthritis. Go back to your table. Start really making sense. Now, when you make your table, don't copy word for word from my PowerPoint. Really try to write it in your own words and break it down and keep it simple and start seeing those different things that um, make each of these disease processes so special. Um, and then get out there and start teaching someone else, applying it in a new way. There's good case studies around this. The other thing you'll want to do, um, especially after I talk about osteoporosis next, is really break down okay diet questions diet questions always throw students off like so what would be a good meal plate for a patient with gout what would I want to avoid um, anyway I hope this helps see you next for osteoporosis